Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast for Timer Network. I'm Jeff Snyder and this is BRN AM for Monday, November 2nd, 2020. And our top stories today, how women view financial success and how they deal with major events like divorce. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Marielle Schurig. She's Vice President of Wealth Management for UBS Financial Services. Marielle, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure talking with you. And as I mentioned uh, previously on the show, we had Cindy Hounsel, who is the president of Wiser, an organization focused on women's financial security, especially around retirement. And you have a particular niche in your business where you help a lot of women intergenerationally about saving for retirement and just saving in general. So I wanted to get your thoughts. What can you tell us? What are you seeing out in the field today? Sure. So, you know, my role as an advisor really is to help people prioritize their goal and make informed financial choices in their daily lives. So they feel empowered to pursue those goals with potentially greater success than they thought possible. I spent my entire career in the financial services industry, and I like to call it the financial advice industry. Um, I've been at UBS for about 10 years now. I was at Morgan Stanley before that in a similar role. And over that time, I've had a lot of opportunity to talk to all types of people every single day about their personal finances and their goals for the future. And a common theme that I've seen time and time again in working with clients is that it's so important, especially for women, to understand their finances. But women are extremely underserved in the financial services industry, and far too many women take a backseat when it comes to long-term financial planning and investing. So I've made it part of my mission over the last few years to really try to help change that narrative. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to talk to you about this today and to dig a little bit further into this topic. So, so first, let me touch on... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Jeff. No, go ahead. I was going to just ask you in, in general, I mean, what are some of the, you, you mentioned that women sometimes take a back seat. Um, and is that just related to uh, maybe financial literacy? It's something we talk about on this network a lot. Not, not just women, but many Americans don't feel comfortable with basic financial concepts, budgeting, banking, et cetera. Yes. Many people feel that way, but we found in our research that the majority of women feel that way. And before I get into that, let me touch on a little bit about the financial services industry, because that also plays a role in financial literacy for women, um, because there is very little gender diversity in financial services. Only about 15% of all financial advisors are women. And according to the CFP board, only, you know, women only account for about 20% of financial planners. So it's a very male dominated industry. And research has shown us that unfortunately many women are dissatisfied by the lack of attention and understanding that they receive from financial services and many feel unheard and unseen. And it really does show when you look at the statistics, because about 70% of widowed women actually fire their advisors after their spouse passes. And in addition to that, about 70% of women prefer to work with a female financial advisor and believe that a more customized approach by advisors that really understand a woman's mindset and needs will serve them better. So gender just certainly does not determine one's credibility or effectiveness as a financial advisor. There are some fantastic male advisors out there who work very well with women, but having fewer female advisors in the industry does highlight a lack of choice that some female clients will face when seeking help. And it does create blind spots in how the industry meets the needs of these women and provides them with the education that they need to stay on track with their finances. So 
personally, I'm constantly encouraging younger women to get interested in the industry as a career path and more than ever before. And I think we're seeing this a lot now with the pandemic, um, financial advice from professionals who are looking to help and serve um, in this industry is it's just requiring more and more emotional and empathetic support from advisors. So it's a great business for women to be in. Um, and there's a huge need, especially because women have such unique financial situations and measure financial success much differently than men do. So to answer your question, some of the examples here really, you know, if a recent PIMCO survey showed that women rank health and wellness on par with for longevity. And by contrast, male investors typically prioritize market performance as their primary financial goals. So that's one example of just how different men and, and women are. Um, and while men and women are both willing to take risk, women are more comfortable taking calculated risks that are based on their certainty of achieving their goals. They're, they just take based approach. And this can also make them less willing to invest in the financial markets. So again, education is really key to overcoming this hurdle. So instead of leaving women with higher cash balances and an over allocation to low risk investments, which can dampen returns over time, financial advisors who take the time to provide comprehensive financial planning explanations can really help women become more comfortable with investing and and taking that you know, appropriate amount of risk is aligned with meeting, the, taking the appropriate amount of risk that's aligned with um, meeting their goals. Um, women also lead very different lives than men. Right, so women face wage inequality. Um, the gender uh, pay gap compounds over a lifetime does impact a women's ability to build wealth over time. Women also hit their peak earning years earlier than men do. The average age in which annual salaries for women in the U.S. stop growing is typically around their 40s. And for men, it's roughly in their 50s and 60s. Um, women's pay is also affected by more career breaks. Women take more time off of work for family-related matters, such as raising children or helping with aging parents or relatives more than men do. And women also tend to keep more of our money in cash and invest less than men, meaning that the money that we do have is growing uh, much, slow, much slower than men's savings over time. And only about 38% of women currently invest in the financial markets. So women retire um, on average now with about two thirds less money than men do. But on the flip side, we, we live longer than men on average. And so we're That's a good thing. Longer than, we're, we're, we're living longer than you. And so because of that, you know, we need our money to stretch over a longer Absolutely. period of time. And, yeah. you know, in fact, you know, statistics show that eight out of 10 women will end up solely responsible for their own financial well-being at some point later on in their lives. So this is really a situation um, that's unique to women and that most women will face. Well, Marielle, I want to take a, I mean, absolutely fascinating. And I think uh, your call of empathy really rings true to me. And I think that's a, a, a sign of a really good advisor in general, but also being empathetic to your customer, real, and especially women, very important. But when we come back, we'll talk more with Marielle about financial wellness for women and also divorce. That's also a very tough financial event for many women and people in general. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. 
We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Hi folks, Joe Namath here, and if you're on Medicare, this is important. You're now entitled to eliminate co-pays and get dental care, dentures, eyeglasses, prescription coverage, in-home aids, unlimited transportation, and home-delivered meals all at no additional cost. Plus, your zip code may have coverage with a give back benefit that adds money back to your social security check every month. Look, with the uncertainty of the virus and vaccines, you need to get everything you're entitled to. Here's the bottom line. Call to get significant benefits at no additional cost and see if your zip code has coverage with the give back benefit. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare Coverage Helpline. You can too. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-924-3920. That's 1-800-924-3920. Welcome back. We're talking to Marielle Schurig, Vice President of Wealth Management for UBS Financial Services. Marielle, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, we always appreciate you uh, coming on and and you know what I heard in the first segment, obviously empathy, being able to understand, that's an important role of the financial advisor uh, in, in general. I mean, it can't just be a numbers, a, quant a quantitative uh, measurement of returns. It, there has to be some empathy there about situation and situational awareness. So one of the things that I've noticed in the industry, I wanna get your take on this, is the shift to financial wellness. And I wanna ask you, is this part of that trend adding more empathy, getting more women advisors, getting a more holistic approach to savings. Is that something that you're seeing as well within your practice, but also financial services in general? Absolutely. It's the way the industry has been going for a very long time now, because when you think about money for people, it's not just about getting a good return in, your, in the market. It's about having a meaningful life and using your money to create the life that you want for yourself, for your family, the type of future that you want, and the type of legacy that you want to live. So you really need to understand your clients. Um, and people go through different stages of their life. They have different things that are happening with them. So really, really wanting to serve and help your clients, which is why I, I call our business the you know, financial advice industry, is we yeah. should be giving appropriate advice. And in order to do that, we really need to know our clients. And it's all so connected. Our money is connected to our overall health and wellness, and it really determines our future and, and our destiny. So in order for it, we really need to switch our our, our, our mind to thinking about money in that way. Now, when we, we come to divorce, divorce has uh, so many implications, not only for the divorce divorcing individuals, but if you have children, if you have a house, uh, items that you've collected over time, and especially the longer you go, the more you've, you've been together, the it, more difficult I would think it'd be to separate and, and go your separate ways. So what are some of the key takeaways here around women and divorce. What should women be thinking about if they decide that they want to part ways with their partner? 
Well, I, this is what really first started getting me um, lit a fire underneath me to really educate women around this because I've seen so clearly throughout my career as I've had women refer to me who are emerging from a difficult and disruptive life event and that can be divorce or that could be prematurely losing a spouse because they passed away and many of these women came to me and they were not prepared. They didn't prepare themselves to manage their finances on their own or participated with their spouses in decisions that impacted their future. So, you know, many of these women were left in the dark and they didn't know what to do or who to turn to for help. And at that moment, you really uncover a deep wall of regret with these women when they realize the consequences of not participating in those major financial decisions. So, you know, research has found um, that the majority of married women were engaged in the day-to-day -day finances, such as budgeting or bill pay, um, buying things for the home, but most were letting their spouses make decisions about how to invest and plan their long-term wealth and financial security. And even the most educated, highly compensated and high achieving women Women don't participate equally. Um, UBS did a study, and for example, we found that nearly half of women um, with you know these advanced degrees, 46% of them deferred to their spouses for long-term financial planning um, for their household, and even 41% of primary female breadwinners still deferred to their spouses. And why is that? And this gets back to your question a little bit earlier. Um, a lot is still based on those societal norms, right? As women, um, we've made a lot of progress. We are breaking glass ceilings. We're starting businesses. We're running for, you know, political, you know, high political power positions. Um, we're demanding equal pay, and equal opportunity, and equal rights. But when it comes for money, we are still falling short. And we have a long way to go when it comes to being equal with men. Um, and we, and if you really think about it, it wasn't until the 1970s um, that women were even able to open up a credit card um, without having a man um, present. So there's still a lot um, ingrained in our society and our culture that you know women aren't taught about money the same way men are. Um, some women think it's not their place, that it's still a man's job. Um, and we forget that, you know, it it's a big and valuable part of our lives, right? People get busy. And a lot of people use that divide and conquer method in their lives when they're married. Um, and, you know, the divide and conquer method should be used for, you know, you take out the trash and I'll take right. the kids to school. Not You'll figure out all of our family finances and I'll take a back seat to it. Um, and so what I always say to women is just you need to be engaged. You need to have these conversations and you don't need to be an expert on everything because research shows that women consistently underestimate their own abilities when it comes to their finances while overestimating what is required to be financially involved. So have a conversation and get curious because at the end of the day, you know, it's all about, as you said, financial well-being and financial wellness and your finances and your money will dictate your future and no one should care about you more or your future or your well-being more than you do. So uh, women just can't take it when it comes to their finances. Yeah, I, I was just going to interject. I, I think you couldn't have put it better. I mean, at the end of the day, you want financial security as an individual. That gives you independence, especially as you age and into retirement, to do the things that you want to do, that you are passionate about. So you need to empower yourself as an individual by taking control and taking the reins. And that doesn't mean, as you said, uh, Marielle, you don't have to be an expert in in uh, understanding a particular fund or stock, but you have to be able to find people that understand what your goals are and are empathetic and can help explain to you what decisions you may need to make. Any thoughts on that? And there, there are also so many resources out there now, and it can feel a bit overwhelming, but just taking the first step and engaging and having those conversations and having the willing, willingness to learn. And what we've seen from women who do manage their money and invest is that women are great investors, right? Women choose less speculative investments than men do. They tend to be more diversified. They have a more long-term perspective. 
And women's investment portfolios normally on average outperform men's assuming they take the same level of risk. So women that are doing this are having success. You just need to start um, and you just need to, to get curious and have the motivation to take action around it. Yeah, well, well said. Marielle, we're going to leave it there. Really appreciate you coming on the program. Really important information. I hope a lot of people are listening out there. Thanks so much for joining us this morning and we look forward to having you back very soon. Thanks for having me. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest or someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the news in retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, check out our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.